In the first and second part of this lesson, we've looked at the three fundamental flow parameters, the equation for discharge that relates all of these three parameters together, and the definition of steady and unsteady flow, and uniform and non-uniform flow. In this final part of the lesson, we're going to bring all of these concepts together and look at something called the principle of continuity. Consider water flowing through a pipe. Pipe flow is defined as a flow where the fluid is moving through a pipe and the pipe is completely full with that fluid. The key to this definition is that the fluid does not have a free surface to atmosphere within the pipe. Rather, the fluid is pushing against the wall of the pipe. Whenever we refer to pipe flow in this lesson series, this is what we mean, that the pipe is completely full of water. A very significant principle of water flowing through a pipe, where the pipe is full, is that at any instant in time, discharge must be the same at all points in the flow. It can't be the case that the flow is 1 litre per second at one point in the pipe, and 1.5 litres per second at another point in the pipe, because where has the extra 0.5 litres per second come from? This would require that matter has been created inside the pipe. Or, it also can't be the case that the flow is 1.5 litres per second at one point, and only 1 litre per second at another point, because where has the 0.5 litres per second gone? This would require that matter has been destroyed inside the pipe. If a pipe is flowing full, and has no other point for water to enter or leave, what goes in, must come out. We can say that for full pipe flow, discharge at one point is always the same as discharge at another point. This is the case regardless of if the flow is steady or unsteady. For steady flow, the discharge is always the same with both distance and time in the pipe. For an unsteady pipe flow, the discharge is now changing with time, but for any particular instant in time, discharge would be the same at all points in the pipe. So, we know that Q equals UA. And that Q1 is always equal to Q2 for pipe flow where the pipe is full. So we could also say U1A1 equals U2A2. This is called the principle of continuity and is an absolutely central concept in hydraulics. It's important to note that velocity and area do not have to be the same between two points. They can both vary, but the discharge must be the same between two points and thus the product of the velocity and the area must be the same. As we touched on in the first part of this lesson, if we force the area to increase, the velocity will need to decrease to conserve mass, and vice versa. In this example, we can see that the area of this pipe is constant, so the area is the same at point 1 and point 2. So because the discharge is also constant and is the same at all points in the pipe, the fact that the area is the same at points 1 and 2 means that the velocity will also be the same at points 1 and 2. But we can also think of a scenario where this is not the case. For example, if we decrease the diameter of the pipe at point 2, what now happens to the flow? In this example, let's say at point 1 the area is 0.1 meters squared and the velocity is 0.01 meters per second and at point 2 the area has decreased to 0.01 meters squared. Can we work out the discharge and the new velocity at point 2? Well we know that Q equals UA and that Q1 equals Q2 which equals U1A1 which equals U2A2. The discharge at point 1 will be the velocity at point 1 times by the area at point 1, which gives us a discharge at point 1 of 0.001 meters cubed per second. And we know that the discharge at point 2 has to be the same as the discharge at point 1. 
Finally, we can use the continuity equation to get our velocity at point 2 by rearranging for u2. We know that q2 equals u2a2 and we now have the value for q2 and a2. So we can rearrange to get our velocity of 0.1 meters per second at point 2 in this pipe. Here we have shown mathematically what we know intuitively. If we decrease the diameter of a pipe and the discharge remains constant, the velocity in the pipe must increase to allow the same volume per unit time to pass through the system. So for pipe flow, we know that for any instant in time, the discharge is always the same at every point in the flow, so we can always use the continuity equation. The other main type of flow we need to consider is open channel flow, which is broadly defined as any flow where the fluid has a free surface open to atmosphere. We can also use the continuity equation for open channel flow when the flow is steady. If open channel flow is steady, we know that the discharge must be the same between two points in that flow. So again, we can use the continuity equation for this scenario. Let's look at a few quick examples of this. This is an example of a steady, uniform open channel flow. The flow parameters are not changing with either distance or time. Let's say we know the velocity at point 1 is 0.014 meters per second and the flow depth at point 1 is 155 millimeters and the depth at point 2 is also 155 millimeters because this is a uniform flow. Can we also work out the velocity at point 2 from this information? This is actually a really easy example as if the flow is uniform we know the parameters are the same at point 1 and point 2 so we don't need to do any working out, we know the velocity must be 0.014 meters per second at point 2 as well as point 1. Although this is a very obvious example, there's an important point to be made here, that if the flow is steady and uniform, and if you know the parameters at any one point in that flow, you can then assume the parameters for every other point in that flow for as long as the flow is steady and uniform. So now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. What about the hydraulic jump that we started to look at in the last video? We can see this is now an example of non-uniform flow, as the flow parameters are not the same between point 1 and point 2. The flow depth is 3mm at point 1, and now 26mm at point 2. If we knew the velocity at point 1 in this flow was 0.71 meters per second and the depth at point 1 is 3 millimeters and the depth at point 2 is 26 millimeters can we work out the velocity at point 2 from the data we've got here The first thing to note is that we can see the flow is steady as the depth is not changing at either point 1 or point 2 with time but this is now a non-uniform flow, as the depth is not the same at point 1 and 2, we know the velocity will not be the same at point 1 and 2. However, as the flow is steady, we can use the continuity equation to solve this problem to get the velocity at point 2. We can start out by working out the area at 1, which is the width of the channel times by the flow depth, with all of these parameters quoted in meters. We can then work out the area at 2, which is again the width of the channel times by the flow depth at 2, with all the units quoted in meters. And now we have u1, a1 and a2. So the only unknown in the continuity equation is u2, so we can just rearrange for u2 to get the velocity at point 2 in this flow. So for open channel flows, 
If the flow is steady, we know the discharge must be the same at every point in the system and therefore can use the continuity equation. However, the big difference between open channel flow and pipe flow is that the discharge does not necessarily need to be the same at every point in an open channel flow. You can have cases where the discharge is different at different points in the system for an open channel. This is because unlike pipe flow where no additional water can enter or exit the pipe, open channel flow has the option for storage, meaning it is possible to have two different discharges in the same system. To think about this, let's consider the example of a dam. Here water is flowing into the reservoir behind the dam and also flowing out of an outlet at the base of the dam. Let's start by considering this system flowing under steady conditions. Let's say the discharge flowing into the reservoir behind the dam is 1 litre per second and the discharge flowing out of the dam's outlet is also 1 litre per second. The reason the flow depth is constant here is because the same amount of water that is entering the system is also leaving the system. If 1 litre per second is entering, 1 litre per second must be leaving to give a steady flow with a constant flow depth. However, if I restrict the flow leaving the dam, we now have a case where the discharge leaving is less than the discharge entering the reservoir. So in open channel flow, it is possible to have a case where the discharge is not the same between two points, but this always leads to unsteady flow. Because if, say, one litre per second is entering the reservoir behind the dam, but only, say, 0.5 litres per second is leaving, for every second that the system runs like this, 0.5 litres is being added to the volume behind the dam, as more water is entering the system than can leave, which leads to the flow depth increasing with time. The opposite is also true. If I adjust the pump settings, we can create a case where the discharge entering the reservoir is less than the discharge leaving it. Now the flow depth will drop as more water is leaving the reservoir every second than is entering it. So again we'll get an unsteady flow. The key message here is that if we see the depth changing at any point in the system, we know this means the flow must be unsteady. So because we have the option for storage in open channel flow, we can only use the continuity equation in this simple form when the flow is steady. To summarise what we've learnt in this video, the principle of continuity shown in these equations can be used to work out the cross-sectional area or velocity for a flow, as long as we know the discharge is the same between the two points that we're applying it. This framework is valid for steady pipe flow and steady open channel flow, and unsteady pipe flow for a single instance in time, but cannot be applied in this form for unsteady open channel flow. For unsteady open channel flow, there would need to be an additional storage term added to these equations. We've spent a lot of time in this lesson talking about the assumptions that allow us to use this principle, and it is really important to have some understanding of this underlying theory. However, for the rest of the lesson series, we're only going to deal with steady flow. So this means for any example we consider going forward in this course, we can always assume that the flow is steady and thus the discharge is the same at any point in the system. This means that we can always use these three equations for any example we consider from this lesson onwards. So we're now at the end of this lesson, and throughout this lesson we've looked at the basic tools that we need to be able to describe flowing water. In the first part we looked at the essential flow parameters, in the second part we looked at how to characterise and define different types of flows, and in this final video we've brought together the first two parts to look at the principle of continuity. In the next lesson we're going to start to look at the physics of how water actually moves in a bit more detail. So hopefully, see you then.